Hi everyone, today is gonna be another grease pencil sketch day instead of a sculpt day. Um, so for this one I decided to do a little, you know, try something new again and just mess around with uh, drawing on top of a um, blocked out 3D mesh. So I'm just like gonna be dropping spheres and cubes and tweaking them a little bit but very minimally I just want to be able to very very quickly you know block something out in 3d and without adding any detail really so it's I think it's really the first time I do something like that so I'm figuring out kind of how to go about this um, and I want to kind of see like how fast I can be with that uh, so to see like how useful it is to me potentially in, in uh, and pipelines and workflows combined with grease pencils uh, or grease pencil so I'm really just kind of figuring out um, like what what basic volumes this character should have definitely gonna be a, a non-organic kind of robotic character which I guess makes this a little bit easier or maybe it makes it more useful to block it out in 3d uh, with primitives um, so I'd, I've been messing around with grease pencil for the last couple days and you know like I said in my previous video it, it's definitely improving um, with every new build sometimes there's little setbacks but in general there's a huge improvement uh, this is the latest build as of, as of the upload of this video um, in my last video I mentioned something about the performance kind of going down once you have a lot of um, you know multiple sketches and I looked at the um, at the uh, the bug report website uh, and I'm not sure exactly what what to call that but um, but I, f I found a report about that and it's a high priority thing it's basically it's I, it's uh, titled something like crisp pencil optimization so I'm um, that's really um, exciting to see that that's something that they'll be improving on and working on so that, that's great uh, so one of one of the reasons I wanted to draw um, on top of a uh, blocked out 3d mesh was that I've I'm, I'm kind of unsure how how to go about drawing with green crease pencil in, in and utilizing the 3d space uh, most of the time I just draw an orthographic but then it kind of almost, you know, begs the question, why are you not just drawing in Photoshop if you're just going to be drawing in 2D anyway? Um, and the problem that I found with drawing in 3D sp space with grease pencil is that it, 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 it's a little bit awkward in terms of where it's snapping the stroke to, even even though you have the, the, um, the ability to snap to... Um, to geometry and to I think you have origin geometry, 3D cursor, and uh, to to the last stroke. But none of those I mean they, they all have kind of um, none of those are ideal really. Um, so I thought in, in this one I would just try to maybe draw on top of the surface of the 3D mesh and see how that works out. And you know it, it definitely had pros and cons um, which I guess you'll, you'll see in, in this video uh, so I, I'm just placing a camera um, and uh, just tracking it to um, an empty and just trying to get like an interesting camera angle um, so one of the things though that would you know I think that needs to be I'm trying to figure out and I'm, I want to see whether or not this is possible but Ideally, what you would have is that you would be able to um, do what I'm doing now, so block something out in 3D very roughly, um, and then use crease pencil to draw on top of it and kind of concept it out with detail, but then be able to change the camera angle or rotate the, the object and maintain a lot of what you did in crease pencil with minor um, tweaks. And because of the way that these, the crease pencil is overlaying on the mesh or positioning itself in 3D, that's not really 
working out very well. Um, but I do see, like it's also not horrible. And that makes me kind of optimistic about it potentially improving and getting to a point where that will be a lot more useful. Um, so the idea would be, you know, I'm sketching out from this specific camera angle now, and that I, sh I would be able to, you know, rotate the, the asset like 45 degrees or something like that. And with minimal tweaking, still be able to um, uh, have a useful concept from a different angle. But for concept artists, this would be kind of, you know, it would save a lot of time um, in making model sheets and stuff like that. And it's there, you know, I, th I think it, it's, it, I would say it's uh, something like that and the workflow works at the moment like 25%, which is not good enough, right? But it does mean that uh, there's, it's, a, it's a start, you know, there, there's something there that it has potential. So um, I'm sure, you know, in a year or so, uh, hopefully, uh, and also it will require a lot, of, a lot of people experimenting like what I'm doing right now. The more people really try to push these tools to their limit, the more it will highlight where the tool can improve. So, and I think a lot of people are excited about this stuff. So I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm very positive about it. Um, so now I, I have my 3D mesh uh, blocked out and I'm just drawing on top of it just with uh, um, line art basically. Um, and I'm kind of the useful thing about having it blocked out is that I'm I'm not a trained 2D artist, so my I'm not super comfortable getting you know pers shapes in perspective or you know look correct. And uh, I know that you know I shouldn't uh, rely too much on 3D as like a cr I shouldn't use it as a crutch. Like it shouldn't be an excuse for why I'm. I'm I, I should just learn how to draw properly in perspective, right? And that's how I feel about it. But at the same time, you know, I, I also want to use the tools that I have. And I do think that um, by doing what I'm doing now, I am also kind of training myself to understand uh, how lines work in 3D and how perspective works. I, even though it's a little bit of a crutch, it allows me to, to get out what I want um, and also to kind of learn um, a little bit at the same time so uh, so I'm blocking out stuff adding some detail and I'm using I, I, I think the mesh or the 3d mesh I don't have it smoothed so the normals are faceted so I can kind of still see the, the topology of the 3d mesh which allows me to kind of um, you know see the angle of the, the it, it, they're almost like guides that I can draw a detail on top of uh, and I also have the 3D objects faded out, increase pencil overlay uh, settings. So you, you see here now that it's kind of, you know, once you turn around the camera, uh, I would say 20% of the lines are good, but the rest are way off, right? And this is with drawing, um, snapping to surface and with a little bit of offset. So now I'm switching to matcap. And I'm turning on the, the shadows and I'm getting the shadow at an angle that is going to be useful for me to, you know, add some, um, when, when I'm filling the lines in grease pencil to add like some, some cast shadow as well, just as, as a guide, basically. And I think this is where blocking something out in 3D can become very useful and can kind of speed your workflow up a lot. Even if you're a trained concept artist and you know how to do this accurately, you know, just having those guides will just make make you able to work a lot faster. Um, so now the issue that I'm having feeling, uh, with the lines snapping onto the surface worked quite well. But if I, the moment I want to fill, um, it's not really working out that well. So I'm just not, right, right now I'm just um, uh, filling the legs and I'm going to do the legs then the arms and the torso and the head in separate layers uh, and so uh, the nice thing about the crease pencil is that you can then sculpt what you filled so I kind of very roughly fill it in I'm not really uh, worrying too much about you know staying be between the lines but then the nice thing is that you can just smooth your your um, uh, the outer lines and or your per perimeters and and then drag and, and pull pull it 
to make it fit the, the lines. Uh, and I'm just messing around a little bit with the, with the gradient. Um, so now I'm just gonna do the rest. Uh, and I think at this point, like I realized that snapping to surface is not gonna work out. And when I switch to 3D, you'll see that, you know, what it's doing, it, it's just the, um, the fill is not, it, it's not managing to deal with it. Um, so I, you know, one of, one of the things that I thought, think might be interesting for a crease pencil is that when you fill that there's also points in, like internal points basically uh, almost like uh, like a net or something like that that you can then push and pull in 3d so you can actually add that you would be able to add volume um, to your fill instead of it just being a single face that's kind of filling those perimeter points uh, I'm not sure if I'm explaining that um, in a, in a way that makes sense but so what I'm doing now is uh, I'm trying to find a better way to uh, to do the, this fill and I, I figured out that the best way to get the, um, the fill to go where I want it is to use the tr to snap to 3d cursor because that way I can just place the 3d cursor very quickly and and then it's gonna basically use the 3d cursors position as where the canvas should be placed in the, in the z-depth basically um, I'm not sure if I'm using all these terms correctly I'm not a, a programmer so um, but so yeah so now I have kind of the, the general uh, layers filled the different parts and now I'm adding another layer and a darker fill color or material and I'm just kind of very quickly outlining where those shadows are um, and I think this is where I'm a little bit um, you know, I'm untrained. Uh, I would say I'm, I'm m much more comfortable drawing line art than I am rendering the line art. So, especially when it comes to like getting the the, the shadows and, the, and the, the highlights to go in the right places, like that's something that you just have to, you know, you have to be kind of a trained artist and do it a lot and, until you really understand the shapes and um, and I don't, I don't have that. So this is kind of where, you know, I, I'm, I'm just not very experienced, and I'm able to use the um, the 3D mesh uh, as kind of a reference for where the shadows go. So this is really useful for me. Uh, and I think if when it, when a, an experienced concept artist would use the same guides that I'm using, like they would be able to do it a lot better as well. You know, so it would, I think it would make their life easier as well and um, so anyway like so I have uh, have this on a separate layer I'm just reducing the opacity a little bit and obviously you can still edit this and push and pull you know the that cast shadow however you want and I think this is again like one of the the most the biggest reasons why you would use crease pencil instead of Photoshop is that you can really like sculpt those lines you know and and, and uh, those um, fill layers as well um, so now I think what I'm what I'm gonna be doing is uh, adding maybe like a highlight layer or first I, I think maybe just adding some detail some darker colors and in total the this the whole process for this character took me a little bit over an hour. I think it was like an hour and 15 minutes or something like that. Um, a, a lot of that was, you know, just getting used to the tools and um, really trying to figure out how to best utilize the, the snapping uh, of the grease pencil. Now just adding highlight areas and I don't really know what I'm doing here I'm just like you know dropping very quickly some some fills uh, and you know hoping that it looks all right and just going by kind of feel I you know alternatively alternatively what you could do and this would be helpful as well 
is you could just uh, set up some lights and uh, in EV or cycles just render your 3D mesh with like uh, the same kind of material that your concept would be. So in this case that would be kind of like a, a shiny metal and so you could just render that in uh, in cycles or EV and just have that as a backdrop and then you know exactly where to place your your highlights as well. You know? So I just didn't want to bother go through that but I might do that at some point. So just adding some details and then some, some sharper highlights. And the great thing about you know working this way is that you can you can always change your your materials uh, so you can always just change them from um, regular fill layers to gradient fill layers and stuff like that at any point I will say that the way that the material and layer system is structured it it's it's, it's still a little bit cumbersome to work through you know like I don't know like I feel the, the material panel it it just maybe it needs a different kind of setup because it's it's a little bit awkward um, to be honest uh, and then you know you have the brushes you have the brush panel you have the material panel you have the layer panel and they're just not positioned correctly I feel to, to become super you know it's it's a minor thing, you know. It's a minor inconvenience, but I think there can there can be some improvement there. And I also uh, am really looking forward to having, you know, proper blending modes on the layers because right now, unless I'm missing this, and I'll hit myself in the leg if if I'm actually missing this. But right now, you can just you just have that opacity, you know. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just a bit that the opacity. But it would be very nice if in the future. You have proper blending modes, uh, overlay, screen, multiply, and stuff like that on um, on each layer. So then you can really kind of uh, you know properly shade your your character. So I'm just adding a whole bunch of detail. I added some like a, like a dirt layer. Um, now I'm adding this shadow, um, and that's going to cause me a little bit of trouble because at some point I'm, I'm going to add an effect, uh, a rim light effect, and it's. I think at this point you cannot select which layers to to use the, the effects on at, at the moment. You can do it with some modifiers, but uh, at the moment you can't do it with the with the effects. So it's applying the rim light to the shadow as well, which uh, which I wouldn't want, of course. And now I'm just like trying to figure out if I can push and pull and, and smooth out a little bit. And this is the nice part is that, you know, at the end you can still go into your line art and have just scoped some of the lines darker or, or have a stronger opacity um, and just make them thicker as well like sculpting the thickness of the lines is really i think that is really great i'm not i don't think i'm doing it properly like i think there's some kind of there's a little bit of a science behind it uh you know which lines you should make thicker and, and which ones should be thinner um like real ink artists will know that i'm, I'm just not very experienced with that um, you know, I also would love to see some like masks on those layers, you know, having the ability to have like gradient masks and stuff like that would, would be so powerful. Because right now the the gradient system is, is it is awkward, you know, to be honest. And, um, and just having some masks in there would be cool as well. But I think that would probably like, I don't know how that would work behind the scenes. Might be a bit complicated. Looking at the character pose now, I, I, you know, he looks a little bit broken actually, like that, that left leg. It's just it, it is a little bit of an awkward pose, especially with that the, the left arm as well, just hanging there. Uh, it's not as cool as I thought it would be, but you know, it's it, it's just practice. Um, so I added that rim light, uh, which is an effect, and then it's also adding to the shadow, and I don't want that. So I'm just making another crease pencil, and I'm struggling a little bit with the the opacity, some uh, some issue. Um, and then just redrawing the, the shadow. Uh, I think at the moment you can't copy paste uh, layers from one crease pencil object to another. I tried doing that and it didn't really quite work. So uh, so yeah, I think, I think I'm pretty much done here. Uh, like I said, I'm not a, a trained 2D artist, but uh, I, I do love doing this kind of stuff and I you know, I think Chris Pencil is really excited, uh, really exciting uh, new tool, and I, I think a lot of people will really 
um, enjoy working with it as they delve into it. I'm definitely gonna delve into it more in the coming weeks.